So today we'll continue talking about um, our good friends ferroelectric materials. And uh, just cover again what we did covered last time. We said that in order for us to recognize a ferroelectric material from a non-ferroelectric material, which is a dielectric uh, or insulator, we can measure its polarization electric field, which is the same thing as measuring sort of the charge or voltage, you know, instead. And we said that if you apply a large enough, if you apply a small field, it'll look like a linear dielectric. Basically, you increase the electric, you increase the voltage, you'll get a linear change in charge. However, if you keep this increase, uh, you'll end up with a sort of a ferroelectric response. And we all know that that looks something like this, where you have, you, you start at zero, and you increase your electric field or charge, and you switch the domains inside of the in the material so the material sort of retains some of that polarization due to switching and that switching action results in a large uh, amount of change in polarization this is why uh, this curve sort of slurp uh, drifts up uh, before it saturates and that, that that switching behavior saturates and after that you only get the intrinsic response of the material and as you decrease the electric field or voltage and you apply large negative electric field or voltage you'll get the opposite effect where the domains in the material as we know uh, in piezoelectric electric materials there are domains or sorry ferroelectric materials there are domains which have a spontaneous polarization and those spontaneous polarizations which are occurring normally the random originally but you know after applying a large field you get them to be oriented anyways you keep applying this negative electric field and you get them to be oriented in the opposite way so now that we have discovered that part you no know, we we conquered this pe result of the electric of the response now uh, what i want to talk about is the strain electric field so we know that ferroelectric materials are also piezoelectric, and we discussed why that is. You know the difference in the springs, the, polar, the polarization occurring in the material, and um, so how can we describe and what does the uh, response of the electric field, say we plot electric field here and strain, what does that look like? That's what we're going to discuss. So again, we talked about a few states here. And we had the first state, we had unpolled. And then we went to a switching state. And then from that switching state, and that switching state again was right here, where we're sort of switching this uh, material. So we went from that switching state to a high field state where we only got the intrinsic response or the unit cell response then we reverse the electric field and when you reverse the electric field what happens you get remnant polarization so some of the polarization switches back but not all of it um, most of it doesn't it just depends on the the type of material you have and then if you if you keep and decrease the electric field you will get switching again and this high field uh, you know behavior will then occur again so let's take a look at all these steps and what they would look like for a uh, PO's electric material which has already been pulled and, you know as we mentioned you know if it's not pulled we start from zero right uh, we start from zero polarization electric field, but as we increase our uh, electric field, we, we develop this polarization for the rest of the time as we are switching this uh, material between this negative and positive electric fields, we, we have a polled material in between. So let's assume we're starting with a polled material, and, and it, as I mentioned, it doesn't really matter if you start with a polled or unpolled. The end result is going to be the same. Just the path of how you get there is not. Uh, yeah. So we have this electric field and we have this strain. So we start at our, our phase number one, unpolled, or let's say we have a we have a polled material, let's say. So if you have a polled piezoelectric material, its you know responses 
equal to this. The strain equals the d coefficient times e. This is the fundamental relationship we learned if you're not applying any external stresses on the material. This is, this is what you're going to get. However, as I mentioned, if you apply large fields, you're going to get some weird stuff going on. And that weird stuff tells us a lot about our P as electric. So if we keep applying a large positive field, a very strange thing occurs. This relationship stays the same. This relationship, it stays the same and it, and it curves actually. At the, at the very high field point, it curves. But it still uh, re it remains quite constant or re relative. So we have, uh, so uh, I'm sorry, it doesn't remain the same. Uh, but it doesn't show a very large change. So we have this type of material, this type of behavior, where we have our, we are increasing our electric field and our strain is originally we had that domain wall contribution, but we sort of, uh, we sort of right here, we uh, saturate that, uh, saturate the domain wall contribution. So as we return on this path and we are reversing our electric field, similarly, like we are, like we saturated ourselves here, and then we reverse the electric field going backward, we're going to be climbing back down this down this uh, sort of avenue. So we're going back down, we're going back down. But we are going really far. Remember, this is the pole material. You know, a pole material would start here. It would start here. So we went, actually went up. We went up, and now we're going back. So if you keep going back, it's going to things are going to switch. So what this looks like on a strain electric field curve is when switching occurs. This happens. In this state, let's take our block material. Our, our piece of material was oriented full up, and this is our and this is and we're drawing our axis from here. So a positive electric field would mean increase in the in the strain. Or if you decrease the negative electric field, and you apply a negative electric field, you would get a uh, increase. You, you sorry, you would get a compressive type of strain or or a negative strain. So as this, if so, if we keep decreasing this electric field, eventually these polarizations are going to switch. So at that switching point, basically, uh, you, your D, your effective d coefficient is zero. So you're you're applying electric field, but you're not getting any more uh, change because partially some of the domains are trying to get smaller because you're applying an electric field opposite to their direction. But some of the domains are actually switching. Uh, so that sort of cancels each other out, therefore you get this sort of plateau area. So this is a switching area, also known as the coercive field. This is the area where everything is everything is switching. Um, but then if you keep applying a negative electric field, you get this curve. And this curve is also representative, a representative of switching uh, the piezoelectric material. So as we are uh, going down this part of the curve here. This switching, this is a switching region. These are switching regions right here. And the region over here, right around the zero polarization, or, or sorry, not zero polarization, zero electric field, that's the low, sort of low field uh, behavior. And now if we decide to decrease our electric field, we're going to be going down this curve. And why do we go down this curve? Because x equals negative d e. Even though our... Um, our electric field here is negative, we still are increasing our strain. And the reason we are increasing our strain is now the polarization vector is down, but we're still referencing our electric field like this. So in this case, we're applying a negative electric field, which a negative electric field in this case would cause positive strain. So due to this switching, which occurs, so this is something which confused me when I first looked at this. I didn't really understand that. First of all, this is a polled material. And if it wasn't a pole, what would basically happen is you would just something like this would happen. You would you'd be increasing your electric field, and then it would start to pull over here. It would start to pull, and then it would sort of get to that point, and then come back down. Similarly, like it when it came over here, you you increased your electric field, and you sort of pull the material in the process. So it doesn't really make a difference if you start with a pulled or unpulled material. Then the strain response is going to be uh, the same in the end if you keep if you saturate the polarization. So again, you we increase our electric field. And then we decreased it. We kept decreasing it, and then we started switching. And the point where we had equal, uh, or where our material was, or where the switching in the material and the, uh, 
and the normal response of the material is equal, we can call it the coercive field, which is the field needed to switch the uh, material. So as we keep it decreasing this electric field, we're inducing more switching, and finally we end up with a reverse polarization. Remember that ferroelectric materials are materials where we can reverse their polarization. So this is the comparison uh, and the explanation of the strain electric field relationship in piezo or ferroelectric materials. Um, and these points denote the coercive field. The remnant polarization, you can't find it here. And we'll just give a brief note on hard and soft PZT. Remember, hard PZT is a, a materials with a large coercive field. So then they're more stable under uh, applied electric field. So their uh, electric field curves look like this. They have more sharp edges here. Their coercive fields are larger, and let's just draw soft and, and, and green. Let's draw soft and green. So, I think, uh, this is, so we're going to have a larger, this, this, this is the decon, this, this slope is the deconstant. So it's going to have a larger deconstant. It's going to go up like that. It has a lower coercive field. So, uh, so basically what you can learn from this chart is that soft materials have a lower coercive field and that also means you can you, you, you can only apply a you have, your limitation on the negative electric field you can apply in a soft material is much lower than the negative electric field you can apply in a hard material and remain stable. So if I want to apply plus or minus 700 volts in my material, I cannot use a soft material because that will undergo switching, which is non-linear. Non the material is going to maybe start breaking down. and So if I want to apply plus or minus 700 volts per millimeter, I can't do that on a soft material, but maybe I can do it. Maybe, oh, sorry, 700 is a little bit high. Even cycling under a sub coercive field, which but it's still comparable to the coercive field, it's still not good for the material uh, with regards to its nonlinear effects. So basically, hard materials uh, uh, keep their um, stability, you know, keep their, for example, the stability of their D constant. Uh, you know, as we know, this does sort of flatten out due to the. Uh, saturation of the of the polarization and the domain ball response however um, the, it's changed in the D coefficient of the hard is going to be less than the change in D coefficient of the soft material soft materials are uh, they have a higher D coefficient initially uh, but if you want to apply large fields then you need to use a hard material and another thing we notice here for the hard material, all the polarization, they switch more rapidly. The switch, the switching region is more sharp because uh, there's a less dispersion of the uh, coercive field uh, reorientation uh, necessities for each of the um, um, sort of structures with domain structures which are occurring not all of the domains in this in the whole material are going to switch all at once there's going to be a distribution and as we see here from the soft material uh, it's uh, their uh, switching characteristics are more distributed than the hard materials which show sharp uh, butterfly curves so, so this is called the butterfly curve I think this one is called a caterpillar I want to say caterpillar but um, I forget the exact term, but this is definitely called butterfly. You can see why, because butterflies are like this. And it's also beautiful like a butterfly. See, this is a butterfly, and this is, a, you know, see the comparison here, butterfly. There are actually a lot of resources online for ferroelectric materials, so I encourage you to look at those, a lot of our videos. Um, so those are also good for demonstrations and so on. Thanks for watching.